Hey y'all, my name is Nat. I hope you're having a terrific day today. And for this video, we are doing a book haul and unhaul for the first quarter of the year. So this is a fun new setup, huh? I just wanted to change things up a little bit and I thought I'd show off my new shelves. JK, these are not new. These are actually fairly old. However, I rearranged some trinkets and now I have more book space, so. Yeah. So as a book haul suggests, I am going to be going through all of the books I have bought or been given recently, and then I'm also going to go through the books that I am planning to unhaul coming up soon. Many of these books I've actually already read and reviewed for videos, so if I have read it and reviewed it, I'll put a link to the video in the cards right here as well as in the description down below so you can go check out those full reviews. So first up is Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay, and I read this as a part of my feminism reading vlog. I adored this. It's a series of essays in which Roxane Gay discusses its feminism and the interconnectedness it has, particularly in media, but also other topics. I adored this for the fact that my common media brain was just going into overdrive and I was constantly thinking and connecting things she was saying with how we react to the media in our lives. It's a fantastic read, particularly if you like pop culture references. As you can see, I tabbed it all up, so I can't wait to go back and look at some of these quotes and see how my opinions of them change in the future. Very excited, very good book, definitely recommend. Next up is Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia, and I read this one as a part of my historical fiction 5x5. Five five. This is a story based on Mexican folklore and is following a young woman after she frees the, one of the gods of death and has to travel with him to try and defeat his brother and help him retake his throne. This was very reminiscent to fairy tales you grow up on, but I also enjoyed the fact that I got to learn more about Mexican folklore and Mayan mythology. It was super interesting. Definitely recommend this one also. The next book I also read as a part of my feminism reading vlog, and that was Outlawed by Anna North, and this is a feminist western. This is following a young woman who was trained as a midwife since she was a young girl, but however, when she becomes married, she actually discovers she might be barren. So she ends up joining this gang and they are actually planning out a heist to fund a safe haven for all outcasted women. I don't know if I would quite call this historical fiction because it kind of has a alternative uh, history aspect going on, but this was an interesting ride. I really appreciated how she took a Western storyline and twisted it with the feminism, had some intersectionality in there. I definitely enjoyed it. However, I don't really ever see myself rereading this, so this is going to to be one of the books that I unhaul this month. Next up is the Shadow and Bone box set, which I read as a part of the Grishaverse read-along. I'll put links to all that stuff down below if you're interested in checking it out. Unfortunately, I couldn't get these at my library because for some reason they were just like really popular at the time when I was starting this, probably due to the TV show coming out. So I finally caved and ended up buying them because I wanted to partake in the read-along. This is following a young woman named Alina who lives in this fantastical world. I believe it's based on Russian culture. There are these people called Grisha who have powers and our main character ends up discovering that she might have them too and has this whole chosen one trope going on. Unfortunately, I wasn't really a big fan of this. It felt a little too like 2012 YA fantasy to me which is what it is, and that's fine, but it's not something that I really think I'm ever going to reread. I don't particularly care to have it on my shelves. However, my best friend Allie said she would take it off my hands, so I'm eventually going to ship this to her. Even though, like, I mean, this box set is really gorgeous. Like, this, this is beautiful. It's a pain in the butt to get the books back in, though. Next up is the first book I was actually gifted, and this is H is for... nope. <laughs> H as in Hunted by Lawrence Treat, and I believe this is a part of a series. This book actually is from 1942, and can we talk about how cool this is with like the inlaid different weapons? This is awesome. My boyfriend actually gave this to me from his grandmother's collection, and it is some kind of a mystery. I believe this story is following an ex-convict who gets accused of a murder and has one person who could corroborate his alibi. However, that person ended up dying five hours after interacting with him, so he's not having great luck. I'm definitely intrigued to try this one out. It's a mystery from the 40s, so it's definitely gonna have that like classic noir feel going on, I think. And come on, again, the cover, just so cool. Next up is Girl A by Abigail Dean, and this was my pick for book of the month last month. I think. This story is following a girl who lived with her siblings in their parents' house of horrors. It is several years later now, and I think her father ended up dying in a shootout with the police, and her mother has just recently passed away in prison, and so all of the siblings end up returning to their house to try and 
figure out and handle all of the terrible things they grew up with. I picked this one up because I'm really intrigued by it. It kind of seems reminiscent to the, I, th I really want to say it's the Rosemary's. That was this couple who murdered together in England, I think. If I'm not right, I'll put something on the screen. I'll, I'll find their actual names. Unfortunately, the only other person I've heard who chose this gave it three stars, so I'm a little more hesitant to go into it, but it still has an interesting premise. Next up was my pick for this month, and that was The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. Penner. Peener? I feel like it's Penner. Again, a beautiful cover. This is gorgeous. All I know about this story is that it follows an apothecary which sells poisons to women who are in abusive relationships. I'm just, I'm ready for this. I wish I could have gotten into this one in March just because it feels like it's going to have some feminist vibes going on. Say la vie, oh well, I can't wait to pick this up still. I've heard lots of good things about it. I think Noelle Seven Pages was the one who introduced me to this and she was just raving about it, so I can't wait to pick it up. Next, as an add-on this month, I did We Hunt the Flame by I have Steph Eisel, and this is going to be my personal book club's read for April, and I actually chose this one. I'm very excited to get into this. It's a fantasy in which we're going between two main characters. One is a woman who is a hunter, but if anyone ever finds out she's a hunter, it would be bad for her. On the other side, we're following the prince who always has to do these terrible, awful things in the name of his father, but he's actually a really sweet person. Of course, it's fantastic, so there's something bad coming into the world magically, and there's some fantastical artifact that can help. So both of these people end up going after it, and of course there's going to be a hate to love romance. So excited. I'm so excited. I'm pretty sure everyone I know who's read this has given it like four and five stars. Finally, for the haul section, my best friend Allie was kind enough to send me a signed first edition of Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas, and I'm still so thankful. I love you. This is the prequel to The Hate You Give and is following Maverick, Star's father, after he finds out that his girlfriend is pregnant with his first son, Seven. I adored the family themes throughout The Hate You Give, and I can't wait for more of those in Concrete Rose. He had a very interesting background in that shortly after Seven is born, he tries to leave the King Lords gang, and I'm so excited to see how that plays out here. Can't wait to pick this up. Okay, now for these last few, it is unfortunately the unhaul section. So first, we're gonna do The Twelve Dates of Christmas by Jenny Bayliss. I read this as a part of the Twelve Days of Bookmas readathon, and <laughs> this was the group book. I think most of us gave it like two stars. It was fine, it was predictable, and um, a bit boring. It follows this woman who goes on 12 blind dates essentially, but of course love might be closer than she's anticipating. Next is, you're gonna be shocked, A Bad Day for Sunshine by Dorinda Jones. This is actually the original copy I purchased myself, however, Dorinda was wonderful enough to send me a signed edition, so I now have two, and given that my best friend Catherine also wants to read this, I thought I would send her this copy. Oh, contact. This story is following Sunshine Bikram, who has just recently become the sheriff of the small town she grew up in, thanks to her parents' shenanigans, and her daughter is just now starting to get into mysteries as well, and I adored it. I can't wait for the second one. I'm pretty sure it comes out in May, June. Finally is The Witch's Daughter by Paula Braxton, and this is a historical fiction where we follow this witch who has lived since the 1700s when her mother was burned for witchcraft. She ended up making a deal with this sorcerer so that she would have powers and be able to outlive all these terrible people in her town. In the current timeline, she is actually telling her entire life story to this woman that she is considering taking under her wing to become a witch as well. This was interesting, and I did enjoy it. I don't really see myself ever rereading it. It was like a 3.5 stars because I think it did drag in certain parts and it felt a bit repetitive. All right, that is it. Tell me if you have read any of these and let me know what your thoughts were. As always, thank you so much for coming to my channel today, guys. I really appreciate it. Make sure to hit like and subscribe down below. I come out with videos on Monday and Friday, but until then, I hope you continue to have a terrific day. Bye!